we're curious what 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum would do in ballistics gel, and in this video, we're gonna share our results with you. Gavin yeah, Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. Guy and I recently did a story with some flat point 350 grain berries bullets in ballistics gel, and it was kind of crazy what happened. Yes, Str <laughs> straight line penetration through Whoop. Both, I only put out two gel blocks for some yeah. reason, <laughs> and in one, out the other, and this nice straight hole right right through the whole thing. T totally cool stuff. And and we were left thinking, okay, well, well that obviously should just over penetrated like, like crazy. What would happen if we did pretty much the same thing, 350 grain bullet, but something with some great expansion? So in this video, we're gonna cover some discontinued Hornady 350 grain XTP factory ammunition. We wanted to do that because it's still very relevant. Hornady still makes a lot of these bullets and for a hunting scenario with the 500 on the lighter side of the bullet weight range, this is a great bullet to use. So why don't we start with the specs from the ammo itself? Sure, this is uh, this ammo I got some time ago when I had mm -hmm. a 500 <laughs> and uh, which what what the heck was so, yours eight and three eighths as well yes it was okay so yeah. it was literally just the same gun um slightly different first year production and they changed they changed the uh, muzzle brake or, or oh, okay, comp gotcha. compensator gotcha. Uh, after that so it was cool. a little bit different but not much basically okay. the same same thing great big stainless steel yep. piece of artillery <laughs> you know, right. one, wonderful i i like them i think they're great <laughs> guns um makes me miss mine a little bit but yeah, so the, the bullet, 350 grain XTP mag for Magnum, mm -hmm. okay? So they, in, they intend these things to be moving out there at Magnum type velocities. Mm -hmm. And we saw that that happened today. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, so 50 caliber, <laughs> love that. 50 caliber <laughs> handgun, you gotta love that. Um, and 350 grains is right smack dab in the middle. It's half of the max weight. So right. It's not so much in the middle of the weight range of the bullets because it's on the low end, right? But it's it's exactly half of the 700 grain typical maximum that you'd find. And, and we've done 700 grain yeah. bullets, the hard cast ones. We've destroyed some cinder blocks and had some fun with that. You're going to want to check out that story. This is a little bit more manageable. It and is. Uh, in this, this gun takes that recoil right out of it. I mean, I mean, okay, it recoils. You know you've touched off something powerful. Yeah. And and you see that in the video shots here, mm -hmm. um, of me, <laughs> me shooting it this morning. But the the gun is pretty darn comfortable to shoot. It really is. And and this stuff, 350 grain bullet, 1600 feet per second roughly. Yep. Um, yeah, and you know, factory ammo, I know they don't make the ammo anymore, but they still make the bullet. You can hand load yeah. this yourself. I use XTPs for all sorts of stuff. Oh, uh, good bullet. 0 .145 uh, G1 BC. Uh, this is not a long range bullet by any means. Really? You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's, it isn't. And you know, to, to recap, the, the model 500 is 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. It's got a capacity of five rounds. It's got that great Smith & Wesson trigger. Yes. It, it kind of feels exactly like my 629 when I'm when I'm shooting it. A lot more mass, <laughs> but it, it feels similar. It's a little bit more front heavy, you know, nose heavy, obviously. That's good. Uh, yes, great trigger, eight and three eighths inch barrel length, and that, that brake compensator that you mentioned, it keeps the muzzle down and it helps to tame the recoil. And you feel the blast from that. You do, right? you do. <laughs> Which it, is it's part of the experience. It's to me. pretty awesome. <laughs> also, the the grip deserves mention because that's yeah. got zorbothane in it, the same stuff they put in the soles of running shoes. Oh, nice. And that helps cushion between the steel frame mm -hmm. and your hand. So I, I find the 500 with 350 grain bullets, even my 440s I used to load, mm -hmm. to be a pretty doggone easy gun to shoot. Yeah. You know, surprisingly yeah. easy. Definitely. So, then you thought, hey, why don't we start with the chronograph, right? So, so tell me about what that yielded. Yeah, we got the uh, average of uh, 1,664 feet per second. Um, That's moving pretty good. It is. About it 350, is. 350 yeah. grain <laughs> bullet. You know, it's interesting. Um, I'm a big fan of the 4570 rifle. Mm -hmm. Very similar ballistics to what I get from my 4570. Really? I can load a 350 grain bullet. Now, I can yeah. load it up higher up closer to 2000 if I want. Okay, gotcha. But it's it's in that same neck of the woods. And it's kind of neat to notice that. Uh, standard deviation, 47 
mm -hmm. feet per second, and our extreme spread of 120, which, you know, factory ammo, okay. Yeah. You know, you can do better than that, hand loading. Yeah, exactly. That's what hand loading is all about, is, is fine tuning that load, finding yeah. just the right powder, just the right powder charge. You know, you're not going to play with bullet seating depth a whole lot with a uh, cannulared bullet. No, it's, right? it's, it's got a place <laughs> to crimp, and, yep. and please do crimp it. Yes. It's, it's, this is a big, powerful cartridge. Yeah. Yeah, you, you want that bullet to stay in there during the recoil. Inertia. Yeah, yeah, the gun is going backwards with a big snap, and the bolts want to stay where they are, which means they want to work their way forwards, which... I've seen guys have problems tying up their cylinders mm -hmm. with 44 magnums. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen it with the 500, mm -hmm. but I'm sure it'd be really easy to make that happen. <laughs> Just not crimp it very well or not uh, not have enough neck tension. Yeah, if, if there was this like grizzly charging you defensive situation or hunting situation, you wouldn't want that to happen. So. No. No. Yeah. Test your ammo as well. That's a, a key part of hand loading is test firing, putting it in the case gauge, you know, making sure it's going to function and function reliably. So then came the ballistics gel. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, where that Barry's bullet did the whole penetration thing, but yep. it, it, it wasn't all that violent on the gel blocks. Right. This this beat up the gel box. <laughs> it just it just took them out behind behind the shed and just whooped yeah. up on them. We we saw some some phenomena we'll call it in the high speed footage that we have never seen before. <laughs> Violence is is a good way to put it. Yeah. In the wound cavity, I mean, totally extreme. Yes, like, like this messes stuff up. I if guess this bullet hits something, it's going to mess it up. Yeah, <laughs> we, we were getting expansion right away with this bullet. Um, it's going to do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, man, you know, I, I can just imagine that on, oh, I don't know, Black Bear. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. That, that whole thought makes me smile. So, <laughs> it might be yeah. a good hunting scenario. I think it'd be great. This 12-inch this wound channel that you can see here, I mean, totally ridiculous is is twice what we got with the 357 mag we just tested right yes. the hornet fdx 140 yes just mammoth wound channel uh 19 and a half inches of penetration and that's explained by that final diameter 0.825 inches that's 65 percent increase in that 50 cal bullet diameter that is massive expansion when you see the bullet it's like whoa this is this is just destructive power. This is a hammer. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I don't think flattening out, but it sure got a huge mushroom. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I was impressed. And, and good retained weight, almost sure. 300 grains retained weight. Yep, 84% so, right right in there. I'd yeah. say that's right on the money it's, for it, where you want to it, be. It's expanding fast, but it's certainly not falling apart. Mm -hmm. we did, I did note that there's some uh, shards of little uh, little bullet shards in the first gel block. Interesting. Yeah. So, so it shed a bit there, huh? It did. I'll yeah. find those when I melt that block. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot of work. <laughs> it is. Okay, so to wrap it up, XDP bullets create a massive wound channel, especially in the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. We had excellent expansion, and I personally feel like this would be a great, probably a great defensive bear cartridge plus a great hunting cartridge up through large deer at least at least you know yeah and, and i i like your idea of taking this thing deer hunting and maybe doing either a red dot or a slightly magnified scope on mm -hmm. it I think low, that'd be low power pistol scope yeah um or red dot depending on the scenario sure depends on how close quarters you're going to be maybe over the mountains on the west side it'd be better with a red dot and over here it'd be better with a scope that's the way i would see it and and Doggone, the accuracy that you can get from one of these big X-frame Smiths mm -hmm. is pretty impressive. That might warrant some follow-up testing because I haven't done much of that with this particular handgun. Well, there's a reason why we only shoot so many shots a day out of this thing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's, yep. uh, yeah, it's, uh, even with all that good stuff we said mm -hmm. about the gun ameliorating the recoil, yep. even with that, you know you're torching off something yeah. pretty powerful. The beach okay. up a little. So we've got a couple questions for you all. A, is this gun practical at all? Does it serve a practical purpose or is it just purely overkill? And second, do you have a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum? What are you shooting in it? What are you loading 
for? What components are you loading with, right? What are you doing with that? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Thank you, Guy, for all of the hard work that you put into melting these gel blocks down and recycling them. It's, it's almost a 24-hour process by the time you heat things up and cool them down and, and fiddle with them and prime, bring them over here to the shop. Prime right? out of the mold and all that, yeah. yeah. Not, not that you're working on it constantly, but it's, no. it's more than people think. But what am I going to do this weekend? <laughs> Melt some gel blocks. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like fun to me. we got a lot more to do here, so we're going to get going. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.